Church Fairbanks welcome you to join us at this midday meditation, which we call Bite and Serve. Our mission today is Mrs. Beverly Lowe. Uh, I, Father David Brian Hooks, will be the uh, speaker of the meditation. And today we're celebrating the feast of St. Gregory of Rome. May our time together be blessed as we turn our hearts to the Lord and seek his favor as he asks us to join him in this work of love. A call to worship. Let us start this service well by reminding ourselves that it is not we who choose Christ, but Christ who chose us. That we are not here because of our goodness, but because of Christ's grace. That we are not here to enlighten ourselves, but to allow Christ to enlighten us that we have not come to be entertained, but to worship God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let us pray. O oh God, we gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you and eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit that the seeds of your word scattered among us this day fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundance harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Um, a reading from the Gospel of John. John chapter 9, verse 1 to 17. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciple asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the, the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging ask, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open? They asked, he replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes. Then man replied, and, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep 
the Sabbath. But others ask, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to, what have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, the Anglican Church in Canada is commemorating the feast of St. Gregory the Great. St. Gregory was the Bishop of Rome or the Pope in the latter part of the sixth century. He would be very much, uh, perhaps not at home, but he would certainly not be surprised at the world in which we live today because the time in which he lived in the latter part of the sixth century was a time of great disruption in Italy. First of all, Italy was not divided into a unified country. It was a collection of city-states, kingdoms, and there was much infighting. So there was political unrest. There was economic problem because so often the crops had failed because of the weather. And also there was bubonic plague that was raging very much as the coronavirus is in our time. People in that day thought with all these difficulties, surely the world must be coming to an end. And Gregory thought perhaps that could be true. Many were frightened. Gregory said, I'm not frightened. If that's what God wants, then perhaps perfection will come to this very divided and difficult world of ours. But Gregory said, meanwhile, there's a lot of work that has to be done. So I'm not going to sit around. I'm going to do the work of God. Let us be prepared. So when the Lord comes by, we will be ready to receive him with joy and with love. And so Gregory had great administrative gifts. He had great teaching gifts. and He employed those gifts. The church is very much blessed by his teachings by his administration, he actually was one of the ones who was able to form what we would call a diocesan system of government. Also, he was a man who loved the arts and especially music. And we have what we call Gregorian chant that was developed during his time. Gregory felt that the word of God, the love of God, the mercy of God needed to be sounded not only in Italy, but wherever the people of God were to be found. The story goes that he saw some Anglo-Saxon slaves in the marketplace in Italy, and he asked who they were. He was impressed with them. And they said, they, said he, they were Angles. He said, oh, I call them angels. Where are they from? And so he found out that they, they were from what we would call the British Isles. And Gregory said, I remember from history that we had Roman legionaries who were in the British Isles in our time, and that many of these centurions had become Christians, and that there was a Christian church in the British Isles. Perhaps it needs to be revived. Augustine, who was a Benedictine monk from St. Andrew's Monastery in Rome, said, I'm going to send Augustine and 40 of the Benedictine monks to go to the British Isles and to bring the gospel there. We who are part of the Anglican communion are very much indebted to Augustine, Gregory, and the 40 monks who came to the British Isles. They, they landed in Kent, near what is now Canterbury, and established the faith there. Very much the Western church is indebted to the teachings and the style and the conviction of the Benedictine world. The way we worship, an emphasis on Holy Scripture, making it alive and relevant for today's world is very much the way that Benedictines taught. The beauty of worship, the solemnity of it, the commitment of individual people to the work of God. All of these things were brought by Augustine and his monks at the behest of Gregory to the British Isles. 
We celebrate him today, not only because of what he has done for the Western world, but by the conviction that as Christian sisters and brothers, there is work for us to do, no matter how difficult our situation may be. We still have opportunity to spread the love and the word of God. We still have opportunity to bring hope where there is despair, to be generous where there is selfishness, to give love where there's hatred. So we give thanks for St. Gregory today for that. And so I would like to conclude this meditation with the collect for St. Gregory. Let us pray. Almighty God, who raised up Gregory of Rome to be the servant of your servants, grant that our lives like his may resound with your word and proclaim your saving work in deeds of justice and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. intercession. Let us pray. Lord God, our provider, we worship you as the one who meets our needs, who grants our daily bread, who restores our humanity. We worship you as the God who knows human need from experience, who knows want and thirst and humiliation. And we worship you as your people, in a world where wealth is mixed with poverty, where we have all we need, but don't know how to share. Where want and hunger and thirst and humiliation are hidden from those with the power to offer challenge and bring change. So open our eyes, not only that we learn sad facts about the world. But open the eyes of our hearts, that we may feel our place in this world as your people. Where there is need, teach us to learn where our wealth lies and help us to give. Where there is injustice, teach us to learn the causes and help us to fight. Where there is broken brokenness, teach us to learn of our own brokenness and help us to bring wholeness. Help us to look to you that we neither rem remain ignorant of the world, nor lose ourselves in despair at its brokenness. Show us how to worship you, the crucified God, the risen God, the God who provides. Help us to carry our cross, to accept your gift of new life, to bring that gift to others. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, the basin and the towel are signs to us of your son's servanthood. You have made us partakers of Christ and of one another. As we go forth, give us grace to count others more important than ourselves, to love our enemies, to make peace. Send the spirit of truth to keep alive in us what Jesus taught and did that our words may carry his good news and that our lives may bear the shape of the cross of the one who lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Go in the strength of the Lord and the paths he has marked for your feet. Follow the light of his word. Shrink not from the dangers you meet. His presence your steps shall attend. His fullness your wants shall supply. On him till your journey shall end, unwavering faith shall rely. 
And may God bless you and hold you in the palm of his hand in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Some notices to share with you up. The noonday bite and sit is every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon. The Sunday service is broadcast on our website uh, at 10.30 in the morning. It will be on September 6th and it will be throughout the year as well. Also every Sunday at 12 noon, we have our Sunday school, which is called Kids for Jesus, K4J. And that too is online. We're delighted to say that our church buildings will be open for public worship on September 13. At St. Hilda's, there will be two services at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. And on Wednesday of the week of the 13th, there will be a Holy Eucharist at St. Hilda's Church at 10.30 in the morning. The music for today was sung by the choir of Grace Community Church in California, and the arrangement of the hymn was by Martin C. Gute. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be, be blessed. blessed and be a blessing.